Thank you, Chairman. Uh, before I get started, I want to welcome our new Chairman, Chairman Paulson. Uh, we've known each other for a few years now, and I'm really looking forward to working with him this year. Uh, Chairman Hassett, thank you for being here today to discuss the economic report of the President and the state of the economy. And I wish I were as optimistic uh, as the Chairman about the policies put in place since you came before this committee in October. Uh, I'm going to be pretty direct. The Republican tax bill serves special interests and will cost our children dearly for generations to come. Rushed through with no bipartisan input, the GOP tax law jeopardizes our fiscal position and further tilts the scales in favor of large corporations and especially wealthy individuals. While the law's impacts on economic growth are debatable, the impact on inequality is clear. Independent analysis shows that within 10 years, more than half of working families will pay higher taxes than they would have before the new GOP tax law. And meanwhile, the wealthiest 5% walk away with an astonishing 99% of the tax benefits. Chairman Hassett, you and the President have promised again and again, most recently in the economic report of the President, that tax reform will increase average family income by at least $4,000. But that is simply not what we are seeing. If we wanted to reform the tax code to help middle the middle class, we could have simply cut taxes for the middle class. Pretty straightforward. And it would have directly given working people in New Mexico and around the country much needed resources to pay the bills, put their kids through college, and save a little something for retirement. Instead, Republicans chose to cut taxes for large corporations and for the super wealthy, and left Americans hoping that those cuts would somehow trickle down to workers. History has shown again and again that's not what happens. And the early evidence this year confirms who the big winners are. So far, corporations have announced more than 210 billion with a B dollars in stock buybacks, benefiting executives and wealthy shareholders. While there have been some bonus and wage announcements, they total just six billion, six billion to 210 billion, a fraction of the money going to executives and the investor class. It's not just the immediate impacts that are concerning. The whole strategy is misguided. The massive increase in deficits constrains our efforts to tackle the problems that we should have been focused on in the first place, like fixing our broken infrastructure and making more accessible and affordable a whole range of post-secondary education options from apprenticeships and vocational education to community college and four-year universities. Think about how we could have invested $1.5 trillion spent on the tax bill. We could have erased every student loan in this country, every single one. One recent study shows that canceling student debt for the 44 million Americans who hold it would boost economic output and create, create up to 1.5 million new jobs in a single year. Of course, we could have invested that 1.5 trillion in infrastructure. The administration's infrastructure plan commits barely any real money to the cause. They say they want to spend $200 billion in, in federal dollars, but its budget makes more than $200 billion in cuts to existing infrastructure programs, from transit to highways to water. In other words, the long-awaited plan invests no new net federal dollars. The $1.5 trillion hole dug because of the tax bill could have actually funded our infrastructure plans. Instead, the administration is hoping that somehow state and local governments and the private sector will pay for roads, for bridges, ports, schools, VA hospitals, and on and on. But the private sector has little interest in investing in sparsely populated, low-traffic rural areas that desperately need infrastructure investment. And the tax law further limits already cash-strapped states' abilities to raise new revenues by capping state and local tax deductions. It's less a plan and more a hope. You often hear that budgets are a reflection of values. That's true. But the massive tax giveaway, maybe even more than recent White House budget, reveals Republican priorities. My Republican colleagues could have joined with Democrats to invest in children, to invest in workers, education, our long-term economic success. Instead, they handed out goodies to large corporations and the uber-wealthy 
and risked our long-term economic health. Chairman Hassett, my focus is on what we can do now and moving into the future. I'm interested to get your insight today on how the administration plans to work with us in making the investments that will help families succeed in today's economy. I look forward to hearing your perspective.